Hey, what's up guys? I am Folygon, and this video was originally supposed to be a collaboration between myself and another 3D printing YouTuber. They reached out to me over two months ago for our collab, and the plan was to upload our videos this past week. Unfortunately, last week is also when they decided to completely ghost me and stop responding to my messages altogether. Although they are still active on YouTube and social media, so um, that's fun. <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened there, but I'm not going to be calling this person out. If somehow it does come out who this person is, please don't go take a crap on their channel or social media. I'm not really interested in any YouTube drama or whatever, and I'm totally fine with moving on to more fun videos. I am way better off without them. The delay in recent content is partially due to feet dragging happening with this collab, and also I just moved, uh, and that apparently takes a lot of time and effort. So I'm back in action now, and you can expect more videos very soon. Also, holy crap everyone, I want to say thank you so much for 100k subscribers, which is a little scary to think about. Actually, it's very scary to think about. That's way too many people, and I can't believe you all like my content enough to click subscribe. So I was going to possibly do a video celebrating that, but I was thinking it might be more fun to actually do a celebratory Q&A stream. Let me know down in the comments if that sounds more fun, and if so, we can do that instead. So because of the collab falling through on this video, I actually decided to print this sculpt myself on my Anycubic Photon resin printer. But the print is just a little guy at about five inches tall, nothing too crazy, right? But at this scale, it was a pretty straightforward print. Actually, I made two of them, but I'll talk more about that briefly towards the end of this video. By the way, if you'd like to have a print of this yourself, I have included a link below where you can download the file or directly order a 3D print if you don't have your own 3D printer. Both of those links are down in the description. Here's a quick view of my setup where I digitally sculpt on my Cintiq. If you are brand new to digital sculpting, imagine that this is a ball of digital clay, which you can manipulate with a pen. If you are interested in learning more about digital sculpting, check out the link in the description to my gum road, which is full of courses, my custom brushes, and a whole lot more. Now onto the sculpting process. Beginning with a sphere, my favorite way to start anything, I start blocking out my creature. At this point, I didn't have a ton of direction. I was more so looking for some cool shapes to inspire me. I knew I wanted to make a bust of some kind of creature, and I wanted to pull in some kind of animalistic qualities into the design. Normally when I start sculpting, I have a pretty clear idea of what I'm going to create. This creature bust was a lot different though. I wanted to experiment and play around with sculpting some organic form, and I knew I wanted to make something a little different than what I normally do. So I tried to pull in a little more creepy than I would typically, and make something new. Originally I was thinking bat, and I actually have this little bat creature that I'll show you a quick turnaround of. I did this initially as a little sketch for fun, and it was a good way to help generate some ideas. I was actually thinking I could improve upon that design and try to make something else in that vein, but it quickly diverted from that path as I sculpted. And you'll see very soon how that exactly happens. Near the end of this initial block out, I was hating what I had so far, but I was picking up on some pig or boar-like features in the sculpt, so I decided to take that direction and roll with it. So I completely changed what I had, I elongated the snout, tapered out the neck to include some fat rolls, and completely overhauled the design. I thought I was heading in one direction, and then the sculpt said I should go somewhere else. At this stage, I was really leaning into some of the forms that you can find in a babarusa, which is a prehistoric little thing with tusks all over, which actually pierce the flesh in the snout. It's a really gnarly animal. I knew I wanted to implement some tusks in my character's design eventually, and the Babarusa seemed like some great inspiration for that. I also wanted to make the character a lot fatter, and focus on some organic forms around the neck. So that was the inspiration for some of the roles there. Overall, a pretty grody thing so far, but I really wanted to play with the organic nature of that form. Next, I add those tusks I was mentioning, and work on the shape around the lips to make room for those. Getting multiple parts to interact in a believable way really helps to sell a character. For instance, if your character is holding something, think about how that hand would compress or tighten around that object. How the skin might deform or be affected by gravity. That's what I do with the lips around the teeth, and I do even more to add to that believability there later on. But I like to keep everything at about the same level of finish, so it's on to adding some quick rough texture on the face, because it's way too pristine for something that I want to be ugly. Sometimes it's really hard to move on because you're attached to your work. So one trick that I implement here is messing up my surface with some rough texture to help get me away from that mindset. Then I do something similar with the teeth, and I even break one to add some asymmetry to their form. I really rough up the face some more, looking for happy accidents in shapes to see if I can find anything I like. Very Bob Rossi there for sure. For the most part, this process is to make sure that I am not too attached to any one area, so keeping it rough can be nice for experimentation. 
I use a decent amount of inflation to begin getting pockets and rolls of fat. I also use it to exaggerate form in areas I would like to emphasize. I don't normally use inflate too often because it's kind of a hard brush to control, but I actually found it pretty handy here for quickly increasing volume in specific areas. It was great for making changes to the anatomy of the creature as well, and it's definitely a brush that I want to experiment with more in the future. Now you can see me doing some more work on the ears. I played around with a lot of shapes until I landed on this one here, which is still a little bat-like, kind of a holdover from some of my initial design language. Obviously rough at first, as all things are in sculpture, then refined later on as I work into secondary shapes a bit more. One thing I haven't talked about too much is sculpting with 3D printing in mind. There are many things to consider, but here specifically, I had to make sure that the ears wouldn't get too thin. If I made them super thin, then there's a good chance they would fail on print, meaning that they would break off, or there wouldn't be enough material in the thin areas to support the rest of the shape. That, or they might just be too fragile and break later on while cleaning up the print. Either way, both pretty bad outcomes, so I increased the thickness to avoid that entirely. That's just one area though. I had to make some changes to the mouth and teeth later on to make sure that they didn't have any super deep pocketed areas. Depending on how deep those areas get, it can be impossible to get in there, clean them up, or even print support in those areas. If you're not familiar with supports for 3D printing, it's a pretty straightforward concept, but I'll explain it a little bit later on once we get closer to that area. I add a ton of texture to those ears and kind of way overdo it, but I knock almost all of that back later on. So don't worry, it looks a lot more natural later. Right now, you know, not so much. Another thing to think about for texture is that you need to exaggerate a lot of it to get it to come through in the final 3D print. Very subtle texture work is not going to even show up in a 3D print, so if you want that to be there, it's best to overdo it a little bit. And now on to giving this guy some quick arms. Nothing fancy, that's for sure, just something that represents that form well enough so that I can chop off the ends and complete that bust style. For this, I append a simple sphere and then use the techniques that we looked at at the beginning of this process, which begins by shaping that sphere more in the direction of an arm, slowly building up the primary and secondary form. I then combine all of these parts together for the ears, body, and arms, and then start the blending process, which isn't too much work because I took the time to align them before merging. These separate objects in ZBrush called Z-Tools are much easier to blend together if you have them interacting really well when they're separate. This saves a ton of time down the road, so a couple minutes here could maybe save an hour later on. For this process of blending, I primarily use the Clay Buildup Brush, which is another one of those brushes that I don't use super often. I have my own clay brush that I like a lot more. What is great about the Clay Buildup, though, is that you can very quickly, well, <laughs> build up. And of course, knock that form back down if you know what you're doing. If you're new to sculpting, however, I personally would recommend that you avoid the brush. It's a very difficult brush to control and get good results with. I would recommend the Clay Tubes brush as a good alternative, or my own personal clay brush, which is available at the Gumroad link in the description, with all of my other custom brushes as well. And now for the very boring process of modeling the base or stand that he's going to be attached to. I think watching poly modeling is, well, <laughs> super boring but I tried to make the shape of the stand a little more visually interesting. Unfortunately, one area was much tighter in my print than I initially thought it would be, which caused some issues during the printing process, which I'll show you here soon. But altogether, nothing too crazy here, just trying to make something more visually interesting than a plain old cylinder. Next, I go through the model with my trim brush and clean up a lot of garbage marks on the surface that I had left up to this point. And then I go directly into posing. This was always going to be a super simple head turn, just enough to add some asymmetry to the character. I wanted more of my attention to be on the organic form of the character, using my time to make that more visually interesting. But obviously for that, we need to break symmetry, or else things will look really awkward if they're perfectly symmetrical. I did a decent amount of that on the nose, which you can see here, but this texture was nowhere near strong enough to show up in my final print, although I really like the way it came out in the sculpt, especially the nostrils. It was a really fun area to work on. I continue with some more quick texture around the eyes and then continue that process all around the face. The main technique here is to simply follow the flow of the larger primary and secondary forms I've already built up. So it's pretty easy to continue adding most of this texture. Like I mentioned earlier, some of it needs to be really strong for it to come through in the final 3D print. So I'm a little heavy handed here and there. Then I start adding some skin alphas to the head in various different areas. I apply them stronger than what they appear in the final because I wanted to go back over them manually to add some organic feel to the form. Anytime you use a repetitive texture, I think it looks really awkward and inorganic. So I recommend going back and taking the time to push those textures just a little bit further. For reference at the scale that I print this at, which is about five inches tall or so, not every little wrinkle and pore is going to come through. Some of it is just too small to make a difference in the print. 
but I still wanted to actually sculpt it to have that information. And honestly, you just don't know until you print the dang thing. Now time to go back through and fix the eyes. I don't think the lids were even properly grasping the eyeball at this point, kind of just floating there. <laughs> so that needed some fixing. While I was there, I added a little more form to the upper lid. It was pretty boring up to this point. I also wanted some of the flesh to overlap there. So that was something that I played with. That was a lot of what I wanted to experiment with during this creature bust. Overlapping flesh, rolls of fat, and more organic forms. So anytime I got a chance to kind of play with that, I tried to push it as far as I could. I took a chunk out of his ear using booleans, and then added some texture to make it feel a bit more organic. This area was just way too awkwardly thick as well, so I thinned that out later. And continued to make that feel more like a wound of some kind, and less like I subtracted a cylinder from one small part of the ear. At this stage, I began making some changes to the mouth as it wasn't looking piggy... Uh, pig, piggly enough? <laughs> The upper lip under the nose really made for a confusing amount of information, and I wasn't a fan of how it was reading. It really didn't look like a pig snout to me. So I almost completely removed the upper lip there, tucking it up underneath the nose to simplify that area and make it more readable, and also be more similar to what we would actually see in a real pig. I also took some time to simplify the form under the eyes. Sometimes things get so busy that you no longer have periods of rest in your design, and then you don't know where to look at a piece. This is what is called contrast. You can't have everything be super detailed and busy. Well, I guess you can. <laughs> it's just not going to look super great. Those periods of rest, because there are fewer of them, draw your attention. The same would be true if I simplified everything except for a couple areas where I added a bunch of details. Then you would be drawn to those areas of high detail. So I simplify a few areas around the eyes and mouth to help add those periods of rest. Then some cleanup to a few areas and the removal of the excessive form on the ears. I mentioned earlier that I'd be knocking some of that texture back. I wanted the flesh in that area to feel thinner, even though I had to make it thick for printing. The removal of the additional form there helped to push them in that direction. And that is pretty much it for the sculpting portion of this figure. So here is a quick turntable and render of my boar-like creature. If you just so happen to be skipping here to the end to check out those final renders, then I encourage you to go back and check out the full sculpting process. I think you'll find it fun. Well, at least I had a lot of fun working on it. <laughs> So normally this is where I would end my videos, but I thought it would be fun to do a quick print and show off a little bit of that process. I'm printing this pretty small and I'm not going to paint it or anything like that. I actually printed this twice, the first time I did it with a ton of supports because I was thinking I would need them, and because of that I had to do a ton of cleanup to this print. So hours of clipping, sanding, priming, etc. Then I eventually got to a point where I just said screw it, and tried printing it again with almost no supports whatsoever. This turned out surprisingly well. I've been 3D printing for a long time. My professional background is working on toys, and that includes lots of rapid prototyping, 3D printing, large six-axis KUKA mills, you know, that kind of thing. The Anycubic Photon I'm currently using, though, is a new machine, to me at least, and I'm still testing its limits. This is, I think, my fourth or fifth print on this machine, so figuring out what I can get away with is a lot of fun. <laughs> So here is the first print that I spent way too long on, like I said, removing tons of supports, cleaning up until I just said, screw it, I'm done with this thing. And here is the other print, which basically had zero supports, minus the arms, that required the smallest amount of sanding and cleanup. I didn't paint or prime this in any way, I just wanted the print to speak for itself. If you'd like to have a print of this yourself, I've included a link below where you can download the file or directly order a 3D print if you don't have your own 3D printer. Both of those links are down in the description. If you enjoyed this process, I have a bunch more just like it, so click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And if you want to learn more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com slash polygon. There's a link down below in the description for all of my courses, custom brushes, materials, and all sorts of other goodies. Thanks for watching, everybody. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.